buying a bigger house for your growing family can be exciting, but it is crucial to consider the resale value. In today's video, I'll tell you how to make a smart, future-proof investment. My wife wants to go to a larger home because we are small home, four of us here, 19 year old, 15 year old, me and the wife, and we're just running out of room here. She wants to go to a larger home. To me, that's a larger payment, you know, a little less stress on, the, on, on us space-wise, a little more stress on us financial-wise. So let's understand what it is really the resale value, right? That a lot of people really talk about resale value, and it's exciting to really be able to buy a bigger house when it comes to upgrading for your family. You're running out of space and you really want more space. So it's really important to understand that. So the resale value is the estimated amount a homeowner can expect to receive when selling their home in the future, whether it's near, down the road. Most families that I work with here in Maryland, when they are buying a bigger house, this kind of becomes like the biggest investment, the like forever home. Although there's some circumstances when people have been forced to relocate because of jobs and so on, but for regardless what it is, you really need to know all these things. The resale is it's just a reflection of what the house will be worth when the time comes for you to sell the property. That's the bottom line. And a lot of these things can be influenced for various things like location, the condition, market trends, and economic conditions. So there's a lot of many things also. It's not necessarily just the house itself. So how the resale value impacts the long-term financial health of an investment? Because a house at the end of the day, it's an investment, like just like anything, whether you're going to live there or you're gonna rent it out, it's just like any other investment that will appreciate or depreciate depending on so many factors. So the value of a home really plays a crucial factor in the long-term financial health of an investment uh, a strategy that you may have in mind. Some people has the stocks as part of the investment strategy, others have a portfolio of different homes. It all depends what it is. But understanding and maximizing the resale value is where you can actually build equity into a property to ensure financial security and a strategical plan for retirement, college funds, and to create some other opportunities for future investments. It all depends what you really wanna do. But here you are, emotionally attached to the purchase of this bigger house where you want your family to build memories for the future. But how do you really know you're making a good investment when it comes to that and that you will take in consideration the resale value of the property and it's like having a crystal ball but at the same time it's not having one. What I'm giving here some tips on what you really should consider before you sign the dotted line, you know, buying that property. So you see, market trends also have a lot of things going on. If you have an area that it's an up and coming area, for example, here I'm gonna mention a place like Crown in Gaithersburg or like the Pike and Rose in North Bethesda, Rockville area, you're definitely gonna have a lot of things that are up and coming. So you're for sure, you can ensure yourself that living in these areas, around these areas, will potentially give you a very good return on investment down the road but you have to also do your homework ahead of time. So let's just right now break down the suburban versus urban locations and the impact on resale value. Let's just go like that. So on the suburban locations, like advantages, like larger homes and lots, better school districts sometimes, family-friendly amenities, like parking communities, and typically, you know, there's more privacy. Some of the disadvantages will be longer commutes. So for if you're going to go, have to go to work, now you potentially can work from home, but if you have to go to the office, can give you longer commutes, potential for overdevelopment and more traffic than you wanted and more noise than when you wanted it. And of course, you know, sometimes limited amenities because of a slower economic growth in some of these remote areas. Now in a more urban location, advantages will be proximity to some business districts, cultural attractions and public transportation, convenience to a vibrant lifestyle and appealing to young professionals and empty nesters sometimes, high demand for location compensates for a smaller living spaces. Some of these advantages of this is like a smaller living spaces compared to suburban homes, higher noise, pollution, and crime rates sometimes can be higher, and the economic vol volatility of potential decline in certain neighborhoods. So factors that can affect the resale value are going to be the neighborhood quality. 
okay so it's important for you to understand the quality of a neighborhood that you wanted to move in or a subdivision or a location how friendly it is is a kids friendly family friendly it's a more of an adult friendly neighborhood you really do need to take a look and of course if you are like a growing a family in this case and i'm talking that you're moving to a bigger house because you have a family you have kids so schools definitely come take a priority over a lot of these things a good school district definitely can help you with the resale value of your home down the road because if for example here we have like a wooden high school district a lot of people will pay premium money to live in a wooden high school district versus a queen's orchard because they know that school district is much better one to the other they in this almost in the same city and proximity but one is worth more than the other one and of course you know you're going to have also what it is the cost of the home features and upgrades that's very important in today's environment that you have a house that has a lot of the features that you're looking for so today i'm going to touch on a couple of these things that bring the best return on investment so if you see you're buying a house that does not have this kind of a upgrades maybe there is room for a return on investment and appreciation or maybe there is no room so let me just break them down for you here a small kitchen remodeling generally speaking gives you an about an 81 percent return on investment and it can really cost you as low as twenty-one thousand dollars, as as high as fifty thousand dollars this is kind of like a very small project that you want to take in consideration so if the kitchen either has been completely renovated or semi-renovated this is something that you have to look into now if it has not been and you feel like you want to come and do it again you have some room for improvement but it has already been done definitely will assure you that you're going to have some really good return on investment down the road adding a rear deck or front deck or wraparound deck definitely has a lot of specials right now and is because a lot of people are looking to spend more time in their properties and also on the amenities that are surround the property and that being the deck your backyard and so on so it, generally speaking adding a deck nowadays here in montgomery county it will probably will cost you an average about about eighteen thousand to twenty two thousand dollars to put a deck with the permits and everything that is necessary so maybe it, let me know here in the comments where in your area what's the average cost of adding a attached deck to your property garage doors is it's another thing that offers a nice return on investment it's typically speaking about a 75 percent the return on investment it all depends on garage doors it's just like windows there are all kinds of flavors sizes colors materials so i wouldn't want to really give you a number but i will definitely say that um investigate for really good garage doors because that will always give you a good return on investment update or add a bathroom whether it's a full bathroom or a, or a half bathroom there's definitely Definitely always gives you great return investment the ROI on something like this is between 50 and 70 percent so if a household the bathrooms have already been updated then you can actually ensure yourself that you're gonna have a very good resale value down the road or you have room to do it yourself and siding replacement has a really good ROI it's between 77 and 88 percent and average cost here in Montgomery County it's probably looking between 18 and 26 thousand dollars for replacement this is on a bigger house and I'm not talking a townhouse a smaller rambler or rancher I'm talking on a 5,000 plus house definitely gives you those things so those are the things that buyers are actually looking wanted to purchase your property and this definitely ensures you and gives you the peace of mind of a very good resale value now i'm going to give you a warning do not over improve your property for the neighborhood in which the house is located that is the biggest mistake you can do it's to over improve your property so if you live in a property where the average price it's eight hundred thousand dollars but you want your house to look like a 1.8 million dollars then you're going to over improving the wrong house in the wrong neighborhood so might as well just go and find the neighborhood where houses are more in the price range versus over improving and of course always 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 stay away from over personalizing your property that it's okay if you want to do it to live there but when the time comes for you to sell it just be careful but this is more for as a buyer you have to really 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 be careful with those things because most buyers hate when houses are too personalized to the taste of the current owners so let's now go into the financial considerations the cost versus the value right so the cost is the actual expenditure associated with buying and maintaining the house a property included in direct and indirect expenses 
Now the value is the potential worth of a house in a market with which can fluctuate based on various factors not directly tied to the cost incurred. So this is a big two different things that you have to keep in mind. And a lot of buyers fail when buying into a bigger house. They fail to take this into consideration. They fall in love with the house, with the location, the amenities, the schools, suburban, urban, and so on, but they actually fail to take consideration cost versus value. Potential higher costs that you are not familiar with can be the higher taxes because it's a bigger house, Maintenance cost actually is the number one overlooked thing. People only think as well, it's a bigger house. It doesn't take that much to heat up or cool down that property. Well, you kind of can, it can double or triple in some cases. So be careful with those things. A good tip I always tell people says, at least in Montgomery County, it is mandatory that a seller has to give a buyer a disclosure as long as they own the property of the utilities. But if in your area that is not a mandatory thing, you might want to also ask the seller, what is the average cost of your utilities? In the winter months, in the summertime, you want to have a clear understanding what you're going to be exposing yourself to. Remember, a house is an investment, right? It is four walls, it's a ceiling, and you build beautiful things inside of properties. But at the end of the day, it's an investment. I always tell my buyers when I'm moving into a bigger house, let's see this house within the eye of an investor, of an appraiser, of a real estate agent. Let's not look at property just because it makes a lot of sense. Let's just really look it into something that it makes a financial sense to you for down the road, because you just never know. You know, when looking into the value, we have to do research. There are plenty of websites, Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com can actually give you historical price data and trends to in a specific property or neighborhood. So use their filters to kind of take a look on those things. But most importantly, always ask your realtor to run comparables for you in the area. It is a good idea to run comparables for the last six months just to see the recent activity. But it's also a good idea to run comparables for the last two to five to six years just to see what the market is doing in that neighborhood or area. Analyzing comparable homes, doing it yourself, you need to focus on like recent homes that have sold based on a square footage, age, condition, and amenities. A real estate agent, as I said, can provide you a CMA and it should be free and it actually should be done as you are preparing an offer. Another way you can do to ensure the resale value is just to hire a professional appraiser. And you most likely will have to do it when you are doing a loan but it's a good idea to also request a copy of your appraisal value, especially if you have a condition on appraisal, you wanna make sure that the property is going to improve in value down the road. So I'll give you some practical tips. So as at the beginning of the video, I said I wanna give you some tips to ensure yourself that you'll be taking good care of this big investment, right? Make sure you do a very detailed research when it comes to this property because the last thing you want to be doing is not to have something doing your due diligence and your homework. So doing a detailed research about everything you can will definitely ensure you that you are making the right decision. And I just gave you previously a bunch of things that you need to take in consideration. You also might want to consult this with a financial advisor if you have one. It's also a good idea to consult it just to make sure you are in line with this in addition to your loan officer, your real estate agent, and your family members. How can you future-proof your purchase? That's very important for you to know. How can you do that, Robert? Well, here's a couple of things that you can do. You want to make sure that the house you're buying is going to meet current and future demands. What I mean by that is that you're going to be buying a house that if it's going to need any improvements is going to be mostly around cosmetical and maintenance, not around the structural. Because if you start having the structural issues with the property, that means that you're going to have to disclose certain things. You're going to have to spend money in repairs. And maybe at the end of the day, you're going to be on a negative number and a red number rather than making a profit. You're going to be on the red number. So make sure that the house you're buying inquire about history of if it has a basement, any issues with the basement. Is there any waterproofing um, barrier that has been installed in the basement? What about the appliances? What about all the other mechanical items? What about the roof? Roof, make sure you actually have an understanding of a lot of these things because you, then you 
potentially what are going to be, be buying something that may need a lot of money to put out there and as i said you gotta also gotta look into the return on investment when you're doing those things now a repair is a repair but in a lot of cases so many people get big surprises when it comes to big repairs especially one that is very common nowadays is the main water line that comes into the property that to your surprise is not insured by your insurance company so whatever happens between the the sewer system and your house and that water line sewer line something happens in there and it breaks that can cost you thousands of dollars and of course a big nightmare so gotta be careful with a lot of those things so I always say ask more questions as you go through the process than probably the average person will do so that way you know that you can check off those boxes and say okay this is the right investment or maybe it's not a good investment you also want to make sure that the house if it needs to be adapted in the future that you can do those things you see houses that sometimes they have like a main level master bedroom or owner suite on top of the one that is upstairs are very desirable because can be multi-generational properties and let's just be honest we are going to age and we may have to age in place if we cannot afford to go into a retirement community when you become the homeowner right now you're you are the buyer but you will become the homeowner of that property so if having an adaptable spaces can definitely uh, help you like that maybe you have a power room on the main level but maybe you have the potential to add a full bathroom maybe with a bedroom and maybe a portion of the house can be converted into a bedroom or maybe you have enough space to put an addition where the later on that can become a second owner's bedroom with a full bathroom so that you can either bring your in-laws to stay with you your parents or you as you age in place you don't need to go those sisters up and down something that is also becoming very popular is elevators a lot of people are looking into wanted to mean stay in the house longer but at the same time is can we put an elevator so that we don't have to take the steps as we get older so those are things that you actually have to play with and take in consideration the last thing is we're going to balance the emotions and the logic right because the very last thing we need to do is just to make sure this is the emotional versus the practical decision in a lot of cases we act based on emotions because we know that we need the bigger house the kids are all sleeping in the same room or two kids in one room and other two kids on another one we know that we need bigger space but don't go crazy on the bigger space because at some point these kids are going to leave the house they're going to get older they're going to go off to college and university and then they're going to leave the house and then you become that traditional empty nester with this big house that is not being used and yes the kids are going to come back for the holidays but most of the time who's paying the bills and the maintenance and all these things for these properties is you and you're the one being stuck with a bigger investment that you may not need and then at that point then you have to be forced to sell the property and that's when the resale value takes you like importance it's super crucial to do those things a lot of my personal stories with clients is that they buy too much of a house way too big of a house than what they needed there is no rule of thumb but i always tell people i said listen if you don't need the big basement why would you want to buy a big basement so i always kind of like bring reality back to them just to make sure they're not over buying into something that they may not need down the road so bedrooms and bathrooms is important to like you know sleep in their own bedroom and they have access to a shared jack and jill bathroom or some other things but back in the days when my parents were growing up i mean there was probably only one full bathroom in a house and that was it there was no more than that so don't buy a house that has 12 bathrooms because it's it's unnecessary and imagine remodeling all those bathrooms is going to cost you a lot of money so just do what is necessary and but it's bigger than your current situation and always think of long term you know I always tell people let's look at the long term vision of a property like the, that is always a long term and it's very important for you to do that long term of the property I just don't want you to fall into the thing that because of ego you want to buy a bigger house that you, because you needed a bigger house or your income allows it remember you should not be spending more than one third of your income in house payments mortgage and the maintenance and there's many people that I heard they spend up, up to 50% of their monthly income just on what it has to do with the property and that is really to, in my opinion very risky so a long-term vision is a house you can enjoy with your loved ones with your family members it is good for holidays it's good for hosting it's good for entertaining but at the same time it's not breaking your bank it's allowing you to put money aside for savings for future repairs unforeseen events for retirement 
and it's even maybe helping you to put money aside for another investment property you see a lot of people buy sometimes too big of a house and now they find themselves having to retire back to the house they came from okay so a lot of clients call me we live in a townhouse we buy a single family home five seven eight thousand square feet we live there for a period of time but now we need to retire back to a townhouse to a condo so just make sure that look at the long-term vision and granted you know it's like having a vehicle at some point when you were a single you had a two-door sedan and then you got married we upgraded to a four a door vehicle and then you had kids then you upgraded to an suv or a minivan and then the kids are going now you are going back to that so it, it happens it's the cycle of life but you want to make sure that you take all these things a lot into consideration okay i said a lot today it's a lot of things that i said today i'm sorry if i am just making your brain go crazy and bananas but that's what real estate is about and i enjoy bringing all this content to you so do me a favor if you like this kind of content hit that button where it says like it and just like it and if you think this content is valuable, please subscribe. And I promise I'll bring more content like this every week. If you want to have a consultation with me, click on that link and we can have a video consultation. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Have a good day. Bye-bye.